Good morning. Welcome to Penn Manor High School. My name is Mike Licklider and I serve as the superintendent and on behalf of the entire Penn Manor Board of School Directors and our district, I'd like to welcome Secretary Redding to the high school as well as to the new high school agricultural facilities. We have two board directors with us today, uh, Ms. Donna Wirt and Mrs. Nikki Nafziger, whose daughter is uh, one of the people who are wearing uh, the, the, one of the proud blue jacket wearers today. So we want to welcome you, Secretary Redding, and thank you for being here. We're very proud of our students, and we're pleased that you came here today to recognize our program as part of your press conference. The Penn Manor Agriculture Department and the Manor FFA are among the largest and most successful in the state. Our students are continually succeeding in competitions locally, at the state level, at the national level, and we're just very proud of the broad range of experiences that they're able to get through the work of our agriculture teachers. So as you can see as well, we're in the midst of a three-year reconstruction project, so it's been a busy year for us. The facilities behind us uh, is our new STEM wing, which really highlights our agriculture department and a lot of the opportunities to educate our students for the future of agriculture in our community and around the Commonwealth. So we're thankful for the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture for both the funding for the Ag and Youth Grant programs and for your ongoing support of agriculture education. So we look forward to giving you a tour afterwards and having our students highlight the, the new facilities. And uh, we look forward to your remarks, Secretary Redding. Well, great, thank you. Uh, thanks for the kind introduction. It is uh, really nice to stand here uh, on this spring day uh, in Lancaster County um, at Penn Manor High School and, and to be sort of at the, uh, you know, just, just on the edge of uh, a new building project and see the investment. So a note of thanks to the board uh, members who are here, to the administrators, to all of the faculty and staff. Uh, it is just a really good feeling to stand here today with you. There's comfort here, really. Not, I, I realize you got all this construction happening, right? But there's comfort here in that uh, we're standing with one of the finest uh, agricultural science programs in Pennsylvania. Uh, and I always marvel at the Penn Manor High School students who participate in the FFA and they're here. And, and take a look, right? At the end, there, there's not a better group of people who represent uh, the organization of the FFA than, than those who are present. But I can tell you they are fiercely competitive. I know that. And I've watched them at our state competitions. I've watched them at the national competitions uh, in all disciplines. And then, you know, throughout the year, the FFA does a wonderful job of leadership development. And they're always there, right? And I think that's one of the important messages. It's not just about you know, being good at the science, it's good, you have to be good at the civics. You've got to show up, right, and, and articulate and talk about what you do and the vision that we see for agriculture in Pennsylvania. Uh, and knowing that Penn Manor High School, uh, you've got the, the right staff here with your teachers and the investments you're making. So that's why I say it's a good feeling to be here. And there's not a better backdrop to talk about ag and youth program in Pennsylvania than here at Penn Manor High School because it, it, it really embodies what it is that we see as that future of agriculture. It's what we talk about uh, when we say that agriculture is full of opportunities, uh, when we talk about why there was an investment in the Farm Bill. And Representative Miller, thank you for your support, uh, uh, not just today, but throughout and getting that Pennsylvania Farm Bill passed. The only Farm Bill, state level Farm Bill in the nation is in Pennsylvania. Right? And there's a great backstory if we had time to tell you, but uh, I'll just tell you that the key to the future of agriculture in the state is right here. Right? Uh, it is getting folks inspired to think about the possibilities, and they can be in town, they can be in the townships, and they can be in the far reaches of both the county and this state and touch agriculture. Right? The opportunities are endless, and we'll see that as we take the tour today. This is also an important, you know, reminder to me. You know, I started out in an ag science program at Gettysburg High School and, uh, many, many years ago, uh, and that was inspired then by the teachers. And I know our uh, ag science teachers are here today, but it was my teachers at the time who, who you know, saw things in me that I didn't see in myself, right? They helped me see the dimensions of my work, but also 
uh, the future of agriculture uh, and what it held in terms of possibilities. And I was inspired by that, uh, left uh, the school after graduation, went to Penn State and, and got a degree in agriculture education with a minor in ag economics, and then got a master's, right? So all of that is an education uh, anchored, though, in agriculture uh, education. I learned how to weld. I learned how to identify, you know, the soils of Pennsylvania. I learned how to rebuild a gas engine to, uh, you know, construction trades. Learned also those soft skills of interacting, extending a hand, engaging with people in the social setting, but also being able to uh, articulate this future of agriculture. All of that was because of an agricultural science program at Gettysburg High School, but also the teachers who were so instrumental to teaching and helping to shape. And, and again, we'll see that today uh, here uh, at, at Penn Manor. But as we look at the, the future of agriculture, we understand that it is, it is you know, robust. Uh, it is complicated. Uh, agriculture finds itself at the intersection of some of the most important issues of our time, right? We see it in health, we see it in jobs, in the environment, in the quality of life, we see it in trade, we see it in food and both security and access and availability, we see it in science. That's where agriculture is and why it's so, uh, you know, gratifying to stand here at Penn Manor and know that the district believes that and sees that, but you've got teachers, you've got students who uh, see that future as well. As we look at the future of ag, this is about how do we satisfy, you know, a population that continues to grow and expand, right? Uh, today we've got, you know, roughly uh, uh, seven and a half billion people on this planet. In the course of your professional lifetimes, in the course of the next 35 to 40 years, we add two billion more people to the planet. Two billion more people, right? Here we're gonna have the same expectations as you and I for access to food and access to water and access to land. But how do you do that, right? How do you do that? Uh, that is the equivalence of two Indias being added over the course of a lifetime of these students and their professional work. How do you do it? It's with every ounce of science. It's using every resource that we have uh, in, in smart and, and respectful way. It's finding ways to feed people and more people and to feed them in ways that we also want them to be fed. In that, uh, you know, nine billion people, that still has a billion people who are food insecure. So it really is about 10 billion people being added to the planet. You do that through agriculture, you do it through science. All of that is tucked inside of the expectations of our Pennsylvania Farm Bill, but it's also why the ag and youth grants, I think, are the most critical piece of that. Right? You've got to inspire somebody else to do this. Right? You've got to inspire people to step forward who want to farm, who want to be the mechanics, who want to be the technicians, who want to be the scientists, who want to figure out these major problems that we have, uh, both as a society but also inside a functioning society and the importance of food security. Uh, that is within agriculture and why it is so, so important. So we are pleased today uh, to announce the Ag and Youth Grants uh, for 2021, we had a, another uh, amazing group of applications. We could not fund them all, but I am proud to say that we had uh, a really nice group of, of matching grants and direct grants, and I want to say thanks to Sarah Glagora, uh, who's here, is, who's managed through the Farm Bill uh, evaluation process. But uh, at the heart of the Farm Bill is a lot of different things, but it begins and ends with youth. It begins and ends with education. Uh, and making these investments that we have in the Ag and Youth Grant Program, uh, which are about building curriculum. They're about building capacity, right? It's, it's investing in greenhouses. It's in investing in plasma cutters, right? It's making sure that we're doing the right things to support our youth uh, in agriculture, both in the FFA and our 4-H programs around the state of Pennsylvania. So we're pleased to do, uh, in this round, 57 total projects, uh, 32 of those uh, in, in 32 counties, uh, 14 are matching grants, 
uh, in the 43 are direct grants, and Penn Manor received one of the direct grants. And I think this is the second year, right? I think we did a, a matching grant last year, significant matching grant. So congratulations to you. But as we look around the state, I mean, it, you think about what it takes to, to invest um, in agricultural curriculum. It's the mechanical side, it's, it's the greenhouse and physical plant, but it's also the curriculum uh, component. So really proud to uh, be here today to, to announce the Ag and Youth Grants for 2021, $500,000 investment uh, again in, in, our, uh, in our program. For context, uh, we have a lot of components, and I mentioned the Farm Bill, uh, and it was designed really to address what we saw as the vision of Pennsylvania agriculture. So it touches on marketing, it touches on conservation and the stewardship principles of our farm community. Uh, it looks at marketing and the branding of Pennsylvania agriculture. Penn Manor has a brand, right? Uh, Pennsylvania agriculture has a brand. How do we present that to the public uh, is part of the Pennsylvania Farm Bill. Making sure we invest in the next generation through farm vitality grants, doing the new and beginning farmer loan programs and tax credits, all of that's inside of our Pennsylvania Farm Bill, which makes it unique to a state, makes it unique among our competitor states in the nation, uh, but also I think gives us really a clear vision of what we see as uh, the future of agriculture in Pennsylvania. Our latest uh, Ag Impact Study, um, uh, we worked with uh, the Team Pennsylvania Foundation and the Fox School of Business at Temple. 18% uh, of Pennsylvania's gross state product is food and agriculture. 18%. Uh, 590,000 jobs uh, in the state are tied to agriculture, $132 billion uh, every year. So when we look to the blue and gold, when we look around uh, this county and this district, uh, to me it is, it is so reassuring to know we've got state investments, but we also have the people who can get that done, right? Uh, who are inspired by agriculture and see the many dimensions that uh, we know exist, but also those needs exist. And those you're gonna step into that role, thank you. And thanks for your FFA leadership uh, as well. So with that, uh, I'm always uh, pleased to, to be with our Department of Education. They're great partners in the Commission on Ag Education. And today we're very pleased to have Executive Deputy Secretary of Education, Pam Smith. Thank you. Thanks, Secretary Redding. And um, for folks who don't know, we have a huge champion in PA with Secretary Redding, not just supporting FFA and what you've heard about the grants today, but other things that folks don't even necessarily consider part of the department uh, that he oversees, but things like making sure that families are food secure during COVID and advocating for us at the federal level to make sure that folks, um, students and families get the benefits that they need. Uh, we're just really, really pleased for the number of partnerships that we have with the Department of Agriculture, and thank you, Secretary Redding. We honestly, really, we couldn't do it in education without your support. So um, thanks again to Superintendent Licklider for, uh, for hosting us this morning and your board members that are here and our uh, elected officials. I'm excited to join my colleagues, uh, peers, and partners in the field today to join Secretary Redding in announcing this important investment in the future of agriculture. The 57 projects that he referenced are being funded that are being funded will create innumerable opportunities for students to connect with agriculture, learn more about Pennsylvania's leading industry, and explore the dynamic in-demand careers that are waiting for them, some of which they may have never even considered before. From the food on your plate to the chair in which you're seated, our FFA students over there, and to the ground that you hike on so much more, agriculture is all around us and a part of everything we do. These grant projects offer students in urban, suburban, and rural communities across the state the opportunities to learn how and why agriculture is all around us and a part of everything we do through exploration and engagement and dynamic learning activities. Agriculture education is rooted in science, business, technology, natural resources, and more. Agriculture education opportunities like the ones these grants will create are immensely valuable now and will make impacts far into our future. How, you might ask? Because these opportunities will help inform, cultivate, and inspire the next generation of our agriculture industry by removing barriers and increasing awareness of the variety of unique and exciting career opportunities ahead of them. 
many of which they wouldn't have had exposure to without access to this. By creating opportunities for students to participate in meaningful agricultural learning opportunities, we're planting seeds that will sprout in the future. You got that, Secretary Redding? Okay. Agriculture education prepares students for careers that exist today and don't exist today because they haven't been created yet. Careers in agriculture certainly include working with cows and plows, many of which are here in Lancaster County, but they also include serving as engineers, biotechnologists, plant scientists, veterinarians, water quality specialists, and food inspectors, also many of which are here in Lancaster County. Agriculture is hundreds of diverse careers and career paths that are part of the extraordinary $132 billion industry here in Pennsylvania that you heard Secretary Redding reference. Our students who are learning about agriculture today are the leaders of tomorrow. An investment in them is an investment in our collective future. I'm proud of this program and I look forward to hearing about the invaluable experiences these grants create and the lifelong impact they make. I'm a resident basically in the backyard of Penn Manor, so I look forward to hearing about the, the projects that are going to be happening here. And the FFA students, looking forward to hopefully seeing you again in person uh, when you get to go to Harrisburg and celebrate when Secretary Redding gives all the jackets and all the pop and circumstance there. Um, but again, just want to thank the Department of Agriculture for supporting us in this effort and for the invitation to be here today. I'd now like to pass the microphone to Megan Slates, an agriculture education teacher here in the Penn Manor School District. Megan. Hello, my name is Megan Slates and I'm one of four agricultural instructors here at Penn Manor High School. This will be my seventh year teaching um, and every year I teach roughly 100 students in our first year agricultural mechanics class. For some, my class is a stepping stone to CTC. Um, for others, it's one on the list of many ag classes they plan to take. Um, and then there are some who don't know it yet, but they'll thank me one day uh, when they don't have to pay an electrician or a plumber for a small fix. Real life and career preparation are the reasons I love the content area I teach. But the true joy for me comes from watching my students try something new and the look of accomplishment and confidence that they build within themselves through our classes. Penn Manor's agriculture program enrolls just over 400 students and continues to grow every year. We aim to help students develop as leaders while preparing them for a career in the agriculture industry. Our primary curriculum is animal science, production agriculture, general agriculture, horticulture, and agriculture mechanics. Penn Manor's agriculture department runs on a dynamic three-circle model, which includes classroom and lab instruction, the National FFA organization, and supervised agricultural experiences. Related specifically to ag mechanics, um, our program offers an introduction to ag mechanics class, two levels of welding, two levels of engines, construction, ag equipment, and ag business. These students are gonna tell you a little bit more about each of those classes here in a little bit today. Um, with the help of our ag advisory board, um, our program strives to be on the cutting edge of technology and align classes to industry standards through each lesson. Students who complete all levels of our welding curriculum have a vast knowledge of four different welding processes. Propelled by unprecedented improvements in technology, the welding process has now reached an age of automation. Automation has also enabled the industry to keep up with the ever-growing demand of other industries that utilize welding products. Not only does automation allow for faster production, but it also enables a more accurate welding of welding materials. As the industry changes and grows, our high school trade programs must also change and grow. We are very thankful to have been selected to grow our welding program with the addition of the TorchMate computer mnemonic control plasma table and supporting curriculum. In the past year, the agriculture teachers have been working 
to add the new piece of equipment to the new school renovation project and developing student projects to include within the curriculum. With an increase in our student enrollment numbers as well as an increase in material costs this year, we quickly realized that we would need to find ways to cover the expenses of the student projects, um, which led to our second grant, which we're very thankful is being funded today. The addition of the plasma table to our classes provides our students advanced skills in the welding industry through STEM in all aspects of their projects. Students will start by gaining skills related to drafting and design utilizing an online CAD program. Designing blueprints will require students to calculate dimensions and design with accuracy. <clears throat> Proper machine setup will need to be known for arc length, cutting speed, and material type. One dimensional projects and cuts could be the final product of an introductory project or the starting spot for an advanced project which would then require different welding processes for assembly. This dynamic piece of equipment will be utilized in all of our ag mechanics classes that include welding and therefore will impact many students in many different ways. Thank you Deputy Smith and Secretary Redding's leadership um, and the Department of Agriculture and the Pennsylvania Farm Bill for supporting hands-on career and technical education and backing that with funding that will impact um, our program and keep us on the leading edge of industry. Thank you to our Penn Manor administration and school board for supporting agricultural education and encouraging growth in our content areas. And last, thank you to, to my students, <laughs> our students, um, thank you for your passion and your excitement. Thank you for your aha moments um, and your willingness to try new things. Um, it is you guys who drive me to continue to dream for our program and come up with new ideas such as the ones uh, today so that I can ensure you guys are well prepared for life. Um, thank you and I will now announce Angie Eichelberger from Senator Martin's office. Good, uh, good afternoon. It is a pleasure to be here today on behalf of Senator Martin. Uh, the Senator wishes he could be here himself today, but unfortunately, we're fortunately they're in session today, so he's in Harrisburg uh, with that. Uh, it is a pleasure to join uh, Secretary Redding and uh, W. Smith uh, in congratulating Dr. Licklider and the Penn Manor community, uh, school district community, on being a recipient of this um, Pennsylvania Ag and Youth Grant. Um, the Penn Manor School District has historically done a tremendous job of educating and cultivating tomorrow's agricultural leaders. And being a recipient of this grant will certainly enhance uh, their ability to do so into the future. Um, they have proven and shown to have a sound uh, curriculum in the ag industry and uh, very proud of the work that they, that they do. And I look forward to seeing what they will do with this grant moving forward. Uh, so again, congratulations on behalf of Senator Martin to, uh, to the Penn Manor School District and to all the recipients of the Pennsylvania Ag and um, uh, Youth Grant this year. And uh, thank you again to Secretary Redding for having us. Thank you again for joining us today, and I want to say a special thanks to our students for being here, as well as to Ms. Slates for just an excellent uh, explanation of our ag program and the work that our Manor FFA does day in and day out. So at this point, Secretary Redding, we invite you to take a tour of the facility. So thank you again for being here. <laughs>